I'm going to show you how to make sweet chili ribs. They're juicy, they're tender, and they're loaded with flavor. Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I love to use baby back ribs, and the reason why I love them is because we got those little bones and we got loads and loads of meat sitting on top of them, and that makes them so tasty. It's just a big bite of juiciness, and the reason for the juiciness is because of all the fat that runs inside the meat. The first thing that I'm going to do to prepare them is to take off the membrane that sits off the back. You're going to take your dinner knife and just Stick it underneath. Oh, these are some fatty ribs. They got loads and loads of fat sitting underneath the membrane at the back of the ribs. Both of them got it. And that means this is going to be super, super tasty. I'll need to put on some seasoning, but since I want loads of seasoning on it and I need it to stick, I need something to help it stick. And I'm choosing Worcester sauce because the typical barbecue flavor in barbecue sauces comes from the Worcester sauce. Now I'm just going to rub that in. I only need them to be a little wet. Then it's time to sprinkle on some seasoning. And I'm going to go for a dual layer, starting with the Pitmaster X Texas barbecue rub. Now, we've got all the recipes for our seasoning on our website, so you can make it yourself or you can buy it in our web store. For the second layer, I'm going to be using the Tweety Barbecue Rub. The Tweety Barbecue Rub is going to give me a lot of color and at the same time, it's going to add loads and loads of flavor. It's a real exciting seasoning that's just going to make your ribs extra special. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, get a nice and even coat on. It's just a waste of opportunity if you don't season the sides. The cool thing about the Tweety Barbecue Rub is that it has chili flakes in it. And it's one of the reasons that I call these the sweet chili barbecue ribs. Oh, this is going to be so tasty. <laughs> now they're all seasoned up. They're ready to go on the barbecue, but I just want to let them sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. The moisture's got to draw in the flavor into the meat a little bit. And it also helps the rub stick to the ribs, making them more beautiful in the end. And in the meantime, we're going to fire up the Napoleon Ghetto, ghetto Grill. <laughs> in the meantime, we're going to fire up the Napoleon Ghetto Grill. This is the new Napoleon Ghetto Grill. Let's test it with some ribs. I'm going to put in some Napoleon Grill briquettes. These briquettes have smoked wood in them, and I'm going to light them up on one side. On top of that, I'm going to add another chunk of smoke wood. These are the Pitmaster X smoke chunks. And in this case, I'm using Beach, which has a light smoke profile. I'm going to set the bottom vent to almost all the way closed. And I'm going to set the top vent to about 50% open. With the barbecue slowly getting up to temperature, I can already place my ribs in. I'm going to put the thickest one, the closest to the briquettes. Now on this side, we got the fire and the heat. And on this side, we have the indirect side. I'm going to close the lid and let the barbecue come up to a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. And if the temperature goes too high, I'm going to close the top vent a little bit. And if the temperature's too low, I'm going to open up the bottom vent a little bit. It's been two hours and the ribs have reached the core temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. But more importantly, they now have the look that I want. They got that mahogany red smoke color with the seasoning dried up and now it is time to wrap because it won't be taking on any more smoke flavor. So all we need to do now is cook it. Put the ribs on the aluminum foil upside down and I'm gonna sprinkle on some sugar. That's gonna give me a little bit of well needed sweetness. And I got some clarified butter. It's gonna go on top of this. Now don't ever put clarified butter in lumps on the other side of the ribs because it will make horrible stains. And now it will just melt down onto the ribs and then just spread out and become absolutely freaking delicious. So all I need to do now is fold this up. And I like to fold it in a way that I'm sure that it's sealed off completely. No moisture will come out. This is now going back on the barbecue. Time for the other rack to come out. That's gonna get exactly the same treatment. A little bit of sugar. A little bit of butter. The butter is going to make it real rich in flavor and the sugar is going to give it a, its well needed sweetness. And again, seal it off completely, put it back on the barbecue and let the ribs cook. Now you can do this to time, but you can also do this to temperature. So if you just check every now and then, the core temperature should be 92 degrees Celsius. Mm. My guess is it's going to be another two hours. Well, it's not exactly two hours, but super close to two hours. Now the trick is to open them up right now to stop them from cooking. I don't want to overcook these and therefore I'm going to need to give them some room to breathe a little bit. Whoa. 
Look at that. I got a nice pull away from the bones. As I said, I got to give these a few seconds. Let me quickly open up this other one. Let the heat out, stop it from cooking. And at the same time, I'm keeping my Napoleon Kettle Grill at the same temperature because we're not finished yet. Careful that they don't fall apart on me. Look at that. All of those juices. While they're resting a little bit. There we go. The resting is going to take about 10 minutes. I don't need them to cool down all the way where they're cold or touchable. I just need them to stop raising the internal temperature. And with about 10 minutes, that should be done. Then I'm going to put them on the barbecue. So while the ribs are cooling down, I'm going to make a sauce and it's going to be a really, really nice sweet chili sauce. While the sweetness is not going to come from this tablespoon of honey, it's going to come from the three tablespoons of sweet chili sauce. And all you need to do now is just mix it together. And that sweet chili sauce is going to give us a little bit of ginger, a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of zing on the ribs. Now, of course, there are different types of chili sauces, so you can pick your own, your favorite one, sharp one, mild one, whatever works for you, that's the best one. I'm just using the one that my family always uses for egg rolls, and that's gonna be sharp and sweet enough. Mm. Now, you see the ribs dried up a little bit, they cooled down, so it's time to put them on the barbecue. Now I'm gonna open the top vent all the way because I want a lot of airflow. I'm also gonna open up the bottom vent, just three stripes. That will be plenty. And I got some residual heat from those briquettes. And the nice thing about using briquettes is that they'll last a long time, so you will get through the cook. If your ribs are a little bit further than mine, then don't do this. Make sure you support them all the way. Uh, this is already tricky. There we go. You see the barbecue is getting a little hotter. You hear the sizzle. Now I'm going to brush on that chili sauce. Because there's a lot of sugar in this, you got to be a little careful because you don't want the sugars to burn. You just need them to caramelize a little bit. We're going to get that nice glaze on, get them super, super shiny. And actually the color is getting a little bit brighter from the dark bark of the ribs. And after about 10 minutes or so, they're nice and sticky and it's time to get these off. I don't want to touch the top too much. Now, the trick is to always just look for the bone. That is juicy. We got a nice smoke ring, and I mean a real nice smoke ring. And that's why I love baby back so much. You can actually see the lines in the ribs. That's where the fat used to be. And it just rendered out and spread out throughout the ribs to go where it needs to go to make these ribs extra juicy. Because then you can clean off the bone. <laughs> these ribs. Poor. I don't know what to say, man. They're just... Look at the bite. Mm. Clean bone, nice pork flavor, but really satisfying, sweetened, sharpened, flavorized. You know what happens sometimes if I make a photo for the website? Sometimes it never gets made. Because I just forget. Because it tastes so freaking good.